to implement at the university level. We are um, developing a graduate who will be able to work in different areas. Right. Uh, let me give you an example of an engineer who is being employed in a boiler, in a boiler uh, sector. Right. This engineer will uh, be trained on the right skills, the knowledge and the concepts of dealing with machines and boilers. But there are boilers in the hotels. Right. There are boilers in, um, in, in manufacturing industries. Mm -hmm. There are boilers in all various big industries right. that even you can think about, even in household. Right. So are you going to say that in, and when you're giving the concept, you think about all these things mm -hmm. and bring them as, con as, as, as knowledge that this person will apply in different situations. Mm -hmm. However, you may want this particular person who has been employed in um, an industry mm -hmm. which is dealing with boilers mm -hmm. to have specific knowledge of a specific brand. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the brand which has been manufactured by a, a company, Y, right. will have to give extra on-site induction. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're talking about, um, internship or a postgraduate um, uh, induction right. in order to ensure this person is well grounded on this specific boiler right. uh, which you already learned the concept in class. Right. That one does not mean you are repeating the same things in class, but you are enhancing the skills. Right, you're and refining Exactly. It. Right. But you cannot give that induction to somebody who is not an engineer who has not been trained on boilers. Mm -hmm. You will take another three years to clear that person. Right. But here you only need about three months or a few weeks mm -hmm. to bring this person to the level required to deal with those specific machines and boilers. Right, specific. Professor. Uh, let, me, let me call in Mr. Boas a little mm. bit. Of course, it is important mm. to refine your skills, to be able to define what you can do, and to be able to build up on it. Mr. Boas, I don't know if you heard, you know, the sentiments of Mugendi, one of the Kenyans who was talking about IT, digitization, and of course, the professor talking about giving us a very practical example of why it's important, and it is a self initiative it is a personal initiative to go and refine your skills what are your sentiments on this uh, uh indeed I, I i had um the the gentleman whose sentiments uh, for me are about uh, what we consider to be the 21st century skills that will be required uh, by any country any industry and indeed those skills needs to be developed Indeed, uh, the, those become very, very basic skills that uh, just like we used to talk about literacy and numeracy, uh, the digital world which has come, there are certain basic skills that one would require to have. But I want to say also that, uh, that there is a way in which uh, as we uh, conceive the ideas of the kind of programs, the kind of trainings that we want to have, uh, it, it may not necessarily really just fit uh, exactly like uh, we say the key and, uh, and, and the knob in a particular way, precise way. But it is something that when you train these people, they have the knowledge and the skills and the ability to adjust. In other words, they are flexible, they are versatile, they can cope and adjust to situations. Mm -hmm. The skills that they've acquired, the very basic skills but, uh, and particular career path will be the one that will now make them to become uh, even creators more. And here is where I think the link with the industry that was uh, he was raising would come in. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm yet to come across uh, that structured kind of arrangement where the industry really links up with most of our training institutes, including the Tibets, the universities, to the extent that any idea can be incubated, mm -hmm. that an idea brought on board, even uh, uh, some further research can be done, so that that incubation can be done to the level that when it is right, then it can be replicated and even upscaled to the industrial level. I would be thinking that that could be some of the paths that we as a country may be thinking about. And two, it is also important that, uh, uh, I mean, as we grow, um, uh, the, the, because 
when you are growing the economy, definitely the citizens uh, themselves grow. The children are becoming the youth and all that. That we do not create unnecessary uh, competition and tension and bring in uh, negativities that would largely influence the people. And in fact, I'm bringing this because when it comes to the issue of selection of which career path, which courses to undertake, you've seen cases where people maybe, uh, I'll give a practical example, uh, that over time people have been talking about tenders, tenders, tenders. Or, uh, uh, so, so there are those who think that when you are in procurement, mm -hmm then you have an advantage of doing well because they have right. seen a lot of procurement officers, I don't know whether because many who are in government, <laughs> uh, uh, according to the standards, did well. Right. So you would find a class, I mean, many choosing those courses because according to them, oh, that is where so and so made it and that is where many people made I think mm -hmm. the factors which we should be considering and enabling, because we should also be advising these young people, enabling them to go ahead. It is not just that this is the path where you'd be able to make more money. Right. I know right. making money is good, yes. Right. I know, make. I mean, having a good life, good time, there's nothing wrong with having that. But I would more deeply and looked at how do we develop that citizen in a way, and uh, I'm saying with, with, even with the linkage that is being created to the various forces, the industries that are there, and there are some actually new areas, that to, new horizons that will be opening up in this 21st century. Mm -hmm. There are some things which we may not even know now, but eventually they'll open up. I mean, uh, uh, the gentleman who was talking about the artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, the, the robotics are coming in, many things are coming in, but right. not just in that area. Right. Let me tell you, if we go even to agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, because I think, look at the uh, uh, Egerton that used to be a college of agriculture specializing in that, and now it's a full-fledged university and all that. Right. If we right. just say that the kind of innovation we require in agriculture mm -hmm. that now would be taken to the farmlands or to the farmers and communities through the agricultural extension officers. Right.